Hi, I know a lot of you guys ask me if I have experience with Unity or not. Well, guess what? I actually don't. Hello everyone, I'm the Nonconformist, and yes, you heard that right. I only created one game before and I literally started this YouTube channel. I know you might found me crazy, whatever. The thing is, I have experience with YouTube, but I don't really have experience with Unity. So why not trying to combine these two and see what's gonna be the end result? And today's video is gonna be about the first game that I ever created. I only used free assets from the Unity Asset Store. I didn't model them myself because in the university we had a course called 3D Development in which we had to create a shooting game. I don't know why, I felt like it was very very hard at the beginning, but with time I literally fell in love with the process and I was like, oh my god, I love this so much that I feel the need to start a YouTube channel and to continue this journey because I feel like if I would not have created this YouTube channel, I would most probably end up reading something else or doing something else instead of 3d dev so yeah this is why i created this YouTube channel but now back to the subject how did my first game actually start it make sure to grab your popcorn because we will see exactly how i did everything step by step we had to record ourselves to submit two different assignments i think six in the end yeah it's gonna be funny though because you will see me having time pressure and all this stuff keep in mind that i recorded that on 16th of february i think we started at the very end of january and we had to create this map within a few days and uh, without any more introduction let's just jump into the videos and see them together Hello and welcome to the best game of this year. I'm kidding. Uh, I really enjoyed working in Unity. It was an amazing experience. First of all, I want to mention that I watched those six chapters from the LinkedIn course. I really enjoyed them, find them useful. Learned a lot of stuff from these courses. They were very helpful, like besides the courses that we had at the university, we had to watch this in parallel to make sure we know how to set everything up. And yeah, it really worked out creating my assets, this folder right here. This is very, very useful because even now when I'm creating my second game, which I hope is gonna be way better than the first one, I take into account this advice to create a my asset folder in which I will put everything that I grabbed and that I will use in the future as well. And I've imported the materials, the models, everything that I've used basically. I've used a lot of prefabs as you can see here because I duplicate the objects and I've used them multiple times. And as you can see here, I've got a lot of assets. Funny story here, you would not even believe me. So we had to create the map, right? I was scrolling to the Unity Asset Store and the first thing that I did and caught my eyes was the fans. And I was like, oh my God, shooting game, Fortnite, yes. Let's go, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna recreate Fortnite. And this is how it ended up. Free style as skybox, it's basically for the sky. This asset is one of the best assets out there for sky. I'm also using it right now because I feel like it has everything that you need. Everything, all the shadows, all the stuff. It looks great, it looks very natural and it's well done in my opinion. And then we have Medieval House. Basically, you are able to get inside these houses, but not inside those ones, those small ones, because I find it useful if the player encounters this problem while playing the game. So, oh, I'm not able to go there. Well, you have to do something else instead. Me trying to make it a game, but it doesn't even make sense. But anyways, Pierre House, it's basically this one, the fighting the action house, as you can see here. RPG are the small houses. Texture me, of course, another texture. I've also built these bridges because I found it really interesting if the player has the opportunity to climb over this. Fortnite wannabe, let's go. I've also added a lot of box colliders to make sure that the player is able to get into the materials so he's able to avoid the solid objects in the game. Oh my god, this is how I learned about box colliders. I didn't know a thing before. And I was like, why is everything falling apart? Literally everything. Why? And I found out, oh my god, box colliders. Okay. And it helped my life. It made my life so easier. So let's take a quick view of this game and let's play it a bit. This was very funny. Prepare. I don't know why every time I'm trying to record with OBS, it just crashes. So I think I will just play it like this. I'm so nostalgic now watching these videos because I know all the effort that I put in and all the hours, but in the end I was like, it really pays off.
Now prepare because this is the next week, the second one. Hello and welcome back to another video. I moved my camera here because I want you to see this side because this is what we will discuss today. First of all, I want to mention that I've watched the tutorials. I find it really useful. Of course, we had to continue the course on LinkedIn. And I have to say that I've worked a lot on box colliders. As you can see, I did them by myself. It took a while with the stairs and everything. I was very, very tired at this time. We had other courses besides this one. It's not like I was only creating this map. I had a lot of stuff going on in between, of course, my personal life. And yeah, as I said, it was very, very interesting. And I made sure that I've used post colliders for everything, almost everything in my game to make sure that the player is not capable of going through them. For example, even for the trees, as you can see, I've used one for the trunk to make sure that he's not able to get inside of it. And then let's move on to the other things that I did. Here in first person controller, as you can see, I set it as the main camera because I've added shot and show. And uh, not only because of that, but uh, I've also used multiple things in here. So for example, I've inserted a gun, which I will show you later on while playing. And then here in enemies, uh, I got this monster spawner, which allows me to spawn monsters every 15 seconds, but I've also duplicated them and put the monsters in different angles to make sure that it's more entertaining and I also use different materials for every every monster, so yeah. Me right now, you don't think that I'm that enthusiastic compared to how I am right now, but trust me, I was very tired at that time. I've also put here go to target to make sure that the enemy is actually following me. Basically, this is how an enemy looks like, a demon girl, which I will show you later on while playing the game, but I have to record with my phone because OBS is not working. Same issue every time. Now let's give it a try. So as you can see here, I just opened the game. This is the gun. Here are the enemies, basically, starting to spawn in here. I will just kill them. I don't have the bullets yet because I don't have enough time, but I will work on that, I promise. I did it. <laughs> I will do it, but you can see. Basically, I can just kill everyone and I can jump, I can do whatever I want. Uh, I just love it. It's really, it's really nice. Where are you? Yeah, here, as you can see, the animations weren't that good yet. I had to figure out how to make them work a bit better because I wasn't really able to find out the perfect timing for everything. It's still a problem, even nowadays, I didn't work that much with animations in Unity, so yeah. Hello and welcome to the third assignment. So first thing, the directional light. As you can see here, I got only one because honestly, I feel like this is the best design for me, it works. I'm so sorry the sound is that bad. But you can see I was just recording with my laptop and I was kind of far from it. But now I got my microphone, thank god. Perfectly fine. I can see the shadows and I really liked it. I don't want to overdo things just because I feel like it. Because for me it looks perfect just the way it is right now. Uh, also, I've baked all the non-moving areas. So as you can see here in the lighting settings, I stayed like almost 7 hours, I think. No, I didn't stay 7. I just said 7 for him. I stayed, I think, around 11 or something like that. I didn't expect it to take this long, but honestly, I do have a lot of objects in here, even though you may possibly not realize at first, just like me, because I, I knew that I have a lot of stuff that I was like, oh my god, seven hours. But as you can see here, I set everything as static, so this is how I did uh, the light baking. Also, another thing that I did, I set here scale in light map. I made sure that I put the maximum atlas size, as you can see there, for every object to see what's the maximum number for it to have the best quality. For the audio part, as you can see here in my assets, I've created another folder called audio effects. I've imported the packet that you gave us, but I've also downloaded the ones that I actually wanted to use in my game because this is how it works. So here we got the lo-fi bit, which is in audio source right here, as you can see playing the music background, which is fully 2D, because it doesn't make sense having a 3D effect, at least for me. Then, 
um, in this one in ground here we got the footsteps uh, grass walking so this is a 3d sound not completely because i like it better this way so we got the first 3d sound and then the second 3d sound is on the monster spawner basically for the demons the enemies in my game it's fully 3d this one but i've also played with the um, the curve in here it was really interesting playing with this as you can see so uh, yeah but uh, i've also created the mixer because we were supposed to do this and also adjust the sounds from here so i've also created this ones and as you can see i've played with them as well and i'll play it and i will show you so i hope you will like it a thing that i forgot to say okay so first of all sorry for the bad audio in this one what i was trying to say was that I forgot to mention that I've added the grass walking sound only when I was pressing the button. So it's not like it was constantly playing because I saw I saw this in a few games actually. The sound playing without making any sense. Like why would you hear someone walking on the grass if it's not you, right? I mean the monsters, okay, sure, that would make sense. But still, imagine I put like I don't even know five different spawners. So you would hear that sound too many times, it would become very annoying. Hello and welcome to a new assignment. Besides the animation, I would like to add that I've improved the monster spawner here, as you can see. And the enemies will actually come from the bush, which is actually way nicer. And I've also created a script which allows me to shoot and I'm able to hear the sound when I am doing that. So, let's get back now to our assignment. In my assets, I've created a folder named animations, as you can probably see. So here we got the animator. I was really lucky, I would say, because I got here all the animations that I needed for the monsters and for the animals, because I also got animals in my game. I also did everything in Blender for the 3D animation class, but I'm still thinking about uh, importing them here or not. So here we got the rise up. Instead of idle, I was thinking that it's probably more interesting to stand up from the ground and then um, start walking. This is normal. And then we got the blend. Here we got the walk combat cycle. As you can see here, I was playing with um, everything with the animation and it's, it's very, very interesting in my opinion. Then, for example, the run running action as you can see i've inserted here two actions then for attack as you can see problems all the problems we got more and also here we got the parameters which are the ones out here to train a bit more with them the next animator is for llamas as you can see here it's very simple just two idols because i created a movement for their heads to roll their heads from left to right, which is actually very nice. And I forgot to say that uh, I've also played with the transitions, of course, and set the time here and check if everything is okay. And now let me show you the game. I've also added this signs here. The signs for the cars, but somehow it was funny, right? So yeah. And also on the trees, let me show you. It's just an item that I found interesting. Basically, these animals. It didn't make sense, like, at all. And the thing is, it didn't make sense while I was doing it, but it did make sense in the game while I was playing it. You know what? I really believe in this. If it looks nice, you don't have to wonder how it happened. It it does look nice, right? Well, there you go. Here you are able to see the head movement, very, very slow, and also for the llamas. Because when I first imported the animals, they had like this animation constantly running, but uh, I made them static somehow. So I was like, it doesn't make sense if they run, but they stay, right? First, I wanted to make them run in the entire map, but somehow when they hit an object, they would literally fall or something like that. It was very, very weird. It didn't make sense at all. So it was a bit annoying for the player, I would say. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I will just keep them there on the map but i have to focus more on the enemies than the animals and that's exactly what i did so this is why i've added the smooth head movements so it would not distract the player anymore as you can see here and now i will show you the zombies as you can see as i got closer he's just 
trying to protect. If I shoot him, I got the sound basically. So, yeah. Just a lot of enemies out here. Hopefully not on YouTube. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the last assignment. Basically, first of all, I want to mention that I've created this. It's AI generated, but the text is made by me in Canva. Cute logo of the game, I would say, that I will use in the end if I'm able to, of course. I didn't even know if we were supposed to add an icon or if we could, if this was an option. But I was like, I want to create this just to have it, just to have it, you know. So, for this assignment, I've added, as you can see here, a score, bullets, and also a health bar. Basically, UI. For uh, the enemies and floating text for the animals in my game, which is a very cool add-on. I have to say that um, the score and the bullets are not updating themselves because I'm working a lot these days on tr uh, 3D animation and uh, I think integration projects just that takes a lot of time and um, I wasn't able to finish everything um, during these days, but I will try my best. As you can see, I've added um, bullets for the gun, so I've improved the game uh, more. The enemies are able to actually follow me everywhere I'm going, inside the buildings and stuff, so that that's great. So the health bar is for the enemy, as you can see here on top of its head. I've added everything in here. I've played with the um, options right here, the foreground. So this one allows me to, you know, take health of a monster and so on. I have to play with this one more as well. Okay, so here in first person controller, I've added the score, I've added the bullets in this um, UI canvas. It was very nice playing with the um, colors and stuff to make it appealing and uh, besides that the text for the animals as you can see it's displayed it was very funny because i've added like llama and sheep above their heads in case you didn't know what animals are those and also the teacher was laughing very hard when he saw this right this so i think i should play the game and uh, show you so, as you can see here, I've got the text, ship, and if I'm moving the text, also moves, that's, that's great. Oh my god, my neighbors were crazy at that time, they were literally working every goddamn hour. Then we got the llama, and same thing goes for it, I love it. So, as you can see, I'm able to shoot now, which is great. I got this health bar, which uh, stands above its head and... See, the animations were back then also very very weird, like the health bar was doing this, the monster when he is closer to me, he would just put his legs in front, like, that doesn't even make sense, but I fixed them at the very end. I'm able to shoot it and it will disappear, that's great. In the future, I will work more, I also build a respawn. In case I die, it will respawn, respawn me here, and I will update the score and the bullets um, later on. So, yeah, it's going somewhere. Hello, after I finish something new, I will just record to keep up with everything that I do, so it will be easier for you and even for me to remember what I did. So, after I've asked for the feedback, you told me that the shadows are basically too hard on the bushes. For me, the design is very, very important because uh, if something looked nice, it's gonna cut your eye. If not, even though, let's say you got the most interesting game out there, but it doesn't look nice, it wouldn't make sense. People won't play it, right? I mean, the first thing that you see in a game are the graphics. So what I did instead of adding lights, I was thinking, hmm, maybe I can change something onto the bush. And what I did was basically I turned cast shadows off and then I switched here to a light layer 4 instead of everything. So this way you can probably see now there's no hard shadows. I won't play the game because I would like to improve it even more and work on it later on. So this will be like a long video with everything that I'm doing before actually submitting the final assignment. 
Hello and welcome back. So as you can see here, I've added a lot of point lights, but these aren't nonsense because they come exactly from the windows. So this creates an amazing effect. Yeah, a mistake that the teacher saw in multiple projects were that my colleagues put lights in places where it would not make sense. Like why is a yellow light in the middle of the house if you don't have a lamp, if you don't have something like, right? So this is why when I chose these houses, I was like, hmm, they got windows? Well, that's great because I can put the lights in there and it would make sense. When you look inside, it feels like um, the lights are coming. Here is a flag, so this is why it doesn't make sense to point um, a light over here. And what I also did, because here we got just one entrance, we don't have any windows, I've just added this light here, which is amazing and I love the effect, so things just are getting better from now on. Welcome back, so I've deleted a few scripts that I found unnecessary and I've also separated these two because I used to have only one uh, audio mixer but now I got two, as you can see, for sound effects, basically enemies, gunshot and master and uh, I kept only the ambient and the grass walking in the first one. So another thing that I did, as you can see here, I've got a new script that allows me to restart the game. I've also created this empty object here, I've added it. It allows me to restart the game every 30 seconds and the com concept behind it is how many monsters are you able to kill within 30 seconds and now I will work on the interfaces so I think it will be very nice. Hello, so I am back with a huge update because I've worked here on the main interface and it works. Maybe you wonder medieval nexus? Okay, but how and why? Well, I have a song that I really like and it's called Nexus. And I don't know why, but I, for me it was very very interesting this name. And the vibe that I get after I play the game was something medieval. Probably because of the houses and maybe the fans. Even though it's not medieval in Fortnite, well, it was for me in my game, so yeah. If I play the game, but you know, my OBS is not working when I'm trying to run the game. But yeah, this button works. If I press start, it runs the game. If I press quit, it also runs the game. Basically what I did, um, I've got this main menu script with to public void, so not that complicated. Here we got the image, I built it on another um, platform. The start button, I've inserted everything here, start button, as you can see, the quit button, and everything works perfect, so I'm very happy because I did this. And uh, yeah, let's see what comes next. Hello, so another thing that I did is for the bullets, I made them actually work and the principle behind it is that you will start the game with 500 bullets. I'm so proud watching this, I don't know why, but I know every time I was uh, trying to fix something, it didn't work, I spent a lot of time fixing it and then suddenly when it worked, I was like, yes, oh my god, I did it. It's working. I don't know if you saw me before, but even in my previous videos that I posted on YouTube, uh, for example, I created a game in Unity in one day, I created a game in Unity in one hour, I had the same reaction, like every time something didn't work and then I figure it out somehow, I was so, so, so happy. Like, I don't even remember when I was that happy. Which is quite impossible to finish them because I've told you already the game will restart after 30 seconds so the principle is that how many monsters can you kill within 30 seconds with 500 bullets which is enough it's more than enough actually it won't concern the player oh I don't have enough bullets but um, the countdown will be like down so it will start with 500 and then uh, it will go to zero and as you can see I've added the um, text right here this one in gun so it makes sense and uh, yeah, let's see. Hello, so another thing that I did, you know I've told you that after every 30 seconds the game will restart. Well, I've added a text that will display when the game will actually start because you will be like in the middle of the action and it will suddenly restart. So I thought that it's more pleasant for the player to know that, oh, this is what is happening. So I've just added this one and while playing it will um, appear there. Another thing that I did, I know it's not that hard or anything, but um, I've also added a new background sound, so when you first open the game you will have uh, background music even in the main menu, because this is better for the user experience. 
Another thing that I just fixed is music with DM Pro and I've just added the score, it increases by 10 every time I'm shooting the enemies. As you can see here, I just modify the script and that's it, it works perfectly, so I'm happy for that. Another thing that I did, I played with the conditions and the transitions of course here for the enemies and now they look more natural, let's say. So maybe now guys you're actually curious to check out the game, well make sure to check the link in the description because this is my page, this is where Medieval Nexus is, you can see I've created this beautiful page right here. You can download it, feel free to play it, leave a comment here, have fun and let me know how bad or good was it in your perspective and now I'm just gonna play it with you a few seconds just for the nostalgia. So you can see this is how it looks like. I love it. I still love it. It's very fun to play actually, at least for me. Okay, so this was my first experience ever. This is how I created my first game ever in Unity. I'm so happy to share this with you guys because I was waiting a lot to create this video. I don't know exactly why I wanted to start it out with it, but I was like, hmm you know what, I want to create something new, something fresh, and then maybe we can do like looking backwards and see how it all started. And after this project, I got so motivated and you guys actually asked me so many times about my games and if I have something finished, if I have a finished project, and I was like, yes, I got this one. And you were so, so, so curious to play that you made me publish it myself on a live stream on each.io with you. And now let me show you publishing my first game with you on a live stream. I'm just, it's so random. It's published. I hope. So this was my video, guys. Thank you very much for being here and supporting me in this journey. It's a pleasure to talk to you every time and to receive the comments because you are so supportive. You are the best community out there, I swear. Thank you for 444 subscribers at the time I'm recording this. I'm gonna come for me, stay care, and I'll see you in the next one with another great video. Bye.